Hello everyone and welcome to the semi-finals of the PDL. I'm going to be playing Thatch, the head of Puckle, in this semi-final game. And he is the coach of the Chicago Bear Ticks. We did play him during the original weeks of the PDL, during the, um, I don't know exactly what you would call them. But they were the initial rounds of the PDL and we played him then. And we did manage to pull a victory. It was very, very close. And hopefully we can uh, do it again this time uh, without uh, getting put into a position where I'm shaking in my boots that I'm going to lose. So here is the team we are bringing. I, I hope this is the right team. I hope I put the right Pokemon in there this time. Uh, Zapdos, Gyarados, Bronzong, Cluffable, Gengar, and Nidoking. So we've got our bulky Pokemon in Zapdos, Bronzong, and Cluffable, but we've also got our offensive Pokemon in Gengar and Nidoking. And uh, Gyarados, which is pretty much a mixture between the two. Very bulky, but also has the power to break through his team if it gets the chance to set up. So we are going to lock in. And hopefully we can catch him by surprise with some of our, I guess, trick sets. We do have Physical Nidoking, King. We've got Torment Gyarados. So some very interesting stuff that you don't usually see too often. But this is Draft League, so anything is possible. All right, and he has brought Arcanine, Girder, Gudra, Excadrill, Tyranitar, and Celebi. So that's the same six Pokemon he did bring against us in the initial week. So it's possible that it is the... Uh, same sets as well, although we do want to look out for some other some other uh, possible like trick sets as well, like trying to catch me off guard. Uh, I'm going to be leading with Nidoking here because Nidoking threatens a one-hit KO on both Excadrill and Tyranitar and Celebi. And a two-hit KO on both Arcanine and Gudra. So the only thing that really leads well against Nidoking would be the Girder, as it is not threatened by a two-hit KO right off the bat. So it can beat me 1v1. However, we do have the Zapdos that can switch into it. And if he doesn't go for knockoff, we can even switch in the Gengar as well. But Zapdos would be my initial switch into that Girder, as just being able to resist his stabs, uh, fighting, um, or rather, uh, just being a super bulky pivot uh, allows me to switch into physical attackers like that girder pretty easily so we do sh we also should watch out to see if his sets are the same because if they are that would give it that that'll give us a lot of information about his team because we know a bunch of his sets he was running assault vis gudra the first week scarf celebi Dragon Dance, Megatar, which the Tyranitar does have to be Mega. I, I should probably mention that. If you did watch the Team Builder, uh, you would have seen that. And if you haven't, uh, it d should have gone up yesterday, so you can watch that. You can s get a little more information about what he has, or the potential Pokemon he could have brought, as well as what we have brought today. You can see our sets and our sprites. But yeah, he is going to lead off with the Excadrill. That is fine. Ideally, this isn't uh, Focus Ash. And he goes straight for the Earthquake, because if he does attack, we are Focus Ash on our Nidoking. And we can basically prevent this thing from getting up rocks, if that's what it does have. And um, just knock it out. So he uh, does reveal that he's also Mold Breaker, which is great information. That means um, that means that I can't switch in my um, Bronzong to this thing, which is okay, because Bronzong is not really... The answer to this thing, uh, more so Zapdos is. But it does mean that we can't use Bronzong as a secondary check, so it's something I should note. He switches out into the Celebi, that is fine. And we get off the Earthquake, obviously he's not going to do too much damage. Oh, that, I mean, that did 20%, so that's not bad damage. And he's not uh, leftovers, so that's also really good information. I do expect a U-turn here. And so I'm going to actually switch into my Zapdos. Zapdos not only uh, will eat up the U-turn, but if he decides to go for Psychic, I can eat that up too. It'll do a decent chunk, but it won't do too much, and it'll allow me to pivot out again as well. So, And if he does decide to U-turn, nothing, um, nothing that threatens my Zapdos can really come in and uh, threaten me immediately, because stuff that he has that threatens the Zapdos are... Stuff like the Tyranitar, and I can just Volt Switch on that. 
Yep, so we do go into the Zapdos. We reveal the pressure, so now he knows I'm probably running Defog. And he goes for the Shadow Ball, so he predicts the Bronzong switch, and that is okay. This won't do too much. And we do get some leftovers recovery. So here I pretty much expect him to switch out. Uh, staying in, he's risking me going for the Heat Wave, and that doesn't get him much. And I, because Heat Wave seems like such an obvious play, I don't think he's going to go into... Um, I don't think he's going to go into his uh, Excadrill either. So he could, of course, stay in and go for... Like, if he's not choice locked, he could stay in and go for another attack. But nothing threatens with an Oko. Maybe if he's, like... Because I don't know of any Ice or Rock-type moves that Celebi gets. Not on the special side, anyway. So there's not a ton that he can threaten me with. Maybe a Shattered Psych would do a lot. But yeah, we're going to Volt Switch here. I expect the Gudra or the Tyranitar. And while ne neither of those will take a ton of damage from the Volt Switch, uh, it will get me the momentum. I can go right into a Pokemon that I can use to answer one of those things. He could, of course, stay in, but if he is Choice Locked, he has to go for another Shadow Ball. And I am slower than him. Almost guaranteed. Uh, technically, our base stat totals are the same, but I don't have a lot of speed investment, just enough to outspeed Adamant Tyranitar on this thing. So he goes into Arcanine. All right. That's fine, because that means I get to absorb the Intimidate, basically, and still get to Volt Switch out and go into my counter. So, hmm. I'm really tempted to go into... Uh, Nitto King here, but Nitto King might um, might be slower if it's max speed. Although, hmm. I don't know if I want to stay in. I'm I'm gonna go into um. I'm actually going to make this play. I'm going to go into my Gyarados. Mm -hmm. So his attack falls. He reveals the leftovers. That is fine. And technically, I threatened him with an Oko. So unless he fast, he's faster than me and has Will O Wisp. Uh, he get knocked out by Waterfall, which is why I do believe he's going to switch. I don't think. And even if he doesn't switch, um, he doesn't threaten very much damage onto my Zapdos. Uh, unless it's, of course, uh, Special Arcanine, which is completely possible, but I don't think it would be. So I'm going to switch out first, so it's either he's staying in or he's um, slower than me. And he does withdraw. Okay, so that's really good information. Uh, it does mean our Gyarados at least, or at worst, speed ties his Arcanine, if not... Uh, outspeeds it, which means our um, Nidoking King guarantees the uh, outspeeding it. So here I actually am just going to go for the Heat Wave since I went for the Bolt Switch last time. Okay, he stays in, goes for the Psychic. That's fine. Um, and we get the Heat Wave off. This will do a good 50-60%. Uh, And here I'm just going to roost off the damage. I think he's just going to go for it again. There's that chance he can crit or spit F drop. But basically the goal here is to leave. Because I'm not going to uh, keep my Zapdos in here. But I want to get uh, Zapdos healthy enough uh, to switch in later. So, Yep, after that roost and leftovers recovery, we should be healthy enough to check the girder at this point so here I'm going to switch into my um, Bronzong because obviously Bronzong isn't really threatened by Psychic I don't think he's going to switch up moves I based on the way he's playing the Celebi no leftovers and the fact that it was Choice Scarf last week I think this is Choice Scarf Celebi again probably to check a plus one Gyarados which is fine um, I think he's going hard into the Arcanine here I could actually just go for the Earthquake, or I could go for the Stealth Rocks. I'm going to go for the Earthquake, just because he might go into his Excadrill. 
Nope, he goes into the Tyranitar. That is fine. This will also take a good chunk from the Earthquake. And damage is damage on this thing, pretty much. Yeah, so that does a good 40, 45%. And here we're just going to switch into our Cluffable. Uh, he could just go hard for the Stone Edge, but this is still pretty much the safest play. Uh, if he goes for the Dragon Dance, uh, we don't care about his boost because we are unaware. If he decides to go for the Crunch, we resist it, so that's not going to do too much. And with Wish and Protect, we can stall out his Stone Edges. So worst case scenario, it has Iron Head, but that's also not hopefully going to be too big of a deal. So he does stay in. He Mega Evolves, which is fine. And he goes straight for the crunch, okay. So hopefully no defense drop, even if he does, it's not the end of the world. He does get a defense drop, so that sucks just a little bit, but... Uh, I think he's just going hard for the stone edge here. I'm actually going to protect to scout, see what he does. Because he should, uh, at this point, I switched my Wigglytuff hard into this. He should predict me to be um, unaware. So I don't think he's going to go for the Dragon Dance. I think, if anything, he goes for the Stone Edge or Iron Head, or he switches. He'll probably go for the Iron Head unless he doesn't have it. If he doesn't have it, he'll go for, probably go for the Stone Edge. And if he doesn't think that... Because obviously Stone Edge also has that shaky 80% accuracy. If he doesn't want to leave it up to that, because he is pretty threatened by Moonblast right now as well. So we protect, and yep, he goes for the Stone Edge. So that is one Stone Edge down. Seven possible more edges. Hmm. The question is, should I save my Cluffable? Because Cluffable is really only there to um, beat this thing. So I'm going to wish here he goes for the Stone Edge. And yeah, unfortunately I do dodge right there. So I guess maybe that kind of makes up for the defense drop, but not really because what's the point of getting a defense drop if you're not going to land a move after that? Ideally, we can stall out the sand. How many more turns are left? This is the last turn, so I will be protecting right here. And he goes for the Dragon Dance. That is fine because, again, um, I'm in... Um, I ignore the boosts, and now that the Sandstorm is gone, our Moonblast will be able to knock him out if he decides to stay in. So, so ideally, he doesn't crit me here. Okay, yep, and we do eat it up thanks to our unaware ability, and we can just knock him out with the Stab. Super effect. Oh my gosh, he actually lived. Surprising. But that's okay. Because uh, even though he did live, uh, we can actually revenge kill him with our Gyarados. So here we're actually going to protect. Uh, just stall out another possible Stone Edge. Mm -hmm. So that is three Stone Edges? Four Stone Edges. That's four Stone Edges, so that's half his Stone Edges. I'm actually going to wish here in case he misses. Uh, nope, so he does connect. So that's five, he only has three stone edges left, which is fantastic. And here we can go into our Gyarados, which has not been Mega Evolved yet, so we still do have our Intimidate, which allows us to bring him back down to neutral attack, which means now he doesn't threaten very much damage onto us. So here I'm just going to go for the Waterfall. 
I could torment. Uh, okay, hold on. What does he have in the back still? The only problem is uh, the potential of Stealth Rock on the Excadrill. He does have Mold Breaker on it, so it would not be surprising to me if he did have that. Um, I could protect here as well, but I don't want to risk him getting up another Dragon Dance. I doubt he'd predict me to have protect, but still, this is just the safest play. Uh, I don't even think a critical hit would knock me out because of how much bulk we have on this thing. And he could also miss again, which would be unfortunate. But yeah, it does look like Stone Edge is not going to be nice to our opponent today. And he's going to miss again, allowing me to get the free knockout onto the Tyranitar right there. So uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, there's not much I can do about that. It's not like I was planning to dodge the attacks or anything. It's... Um, just that my Gyarados was my best answer to, my best answer apart from the, the uh, Clefable to that Tyranitar. So, uh, I was just going to absorb the hit. That was the plan anyway. So here, of course, we saved uh, this thing for a reason. We're just going to switch it in. I do kind of expect him to read it and go for a knockoff. Nope, he just goes for the Dream Punch. That is fine. Uh, it does a decent chunk, but not too much. And we get above half with our leftovers. I think he's going to actually stay in and knock off, but I'm still going to go for the roost here because I want my uh, thing to be healthy. That is the plan. And yep, he does go for the knockoff, so he gets rid of my leftovers. But uh, considering this thing is still able to check those physical hitters like this girder, uh, I'm okay. Hmm, excuse me. I'm okay with that. Um. Yeah, and here I'm just going to go for the Heat Wave. Uh, he might switch out because he, of course, doesn't threaten too much damage on me. But I'm still okay with this because if he decides to go into Excadrill, he's going to take big damage. Yeah, so he does decide to go into the Excadrill expecting the, uh, expecting the electric move. So if we can land this Heat Wave, we're going to do a good chunk to it. And we do, so that'll do... Yeah, that does... A, Good, good chunk. So we're actually just going to stay in and go for the Heat Wave again. He could Continental Crush here, if that's what he's running on his Excadrill. Which it does look like he's running a Z-move, and it is Continental Crush. So, uh, he isn't boosted, so I don't know if this will actually knock me out. But even if he does, what this means is that he doesn't have any other potential rockers on his team besides this thing and the uh, Tyranitar. So if he does uh, not knock me out, and goes down to Heat Wave, or he knocks me out and I get this free switch in, into my Gengar, he does not get his rocks up anymore, which is pretty important for stuff like my, um, stuff like my Nidoking, King, which wants to preserve that Focus Sash. So I'm trying to think of whether he would want to save this thing or not. Initially, I'd want to say no, but I'm not going to play that risky. I'm just going to go for the Shadow Ball. Yeah, he does stay in. So, didn't want to uh, try to predict the switch into the Gujra right there and go for the knockoff. I just wanted to make sure this thing goes down. And that means uh, there's no not going to be any rocks on my side of the field, which also, uh, we also got rid of his Rapid Spinner, which uh, frees up me being able to go for Stealth Rocks of my own. So, he goes into Gujra here. Uh, we do have our Bronze Song. He could have Flamethrower, but since we are Max Pedef, uh I am going to still switch into this thing. Because even uh, with our Max Pedef, as long as he's not like Choice Specs, um, Flamethrower won't do too much. And if he is Choice Specs, it's pretty risky to lock himself into a Fire-type move. So he goes for the Thunderbolt. So if he's going to go for the Thunderbolt, I assume he's not... Uh, not flamethrower because why would you go for thunderbolt? Um, oh, okay, he does have a fire type move. Unfortunately, my opponent just can't seem to hit a move today, so that's really, really unfortunate because that's pretty much the freest rocks you can have, right? Uh, he's probably going to go for another fire blast here. I'm going to actually recycle in case he hits. 
Uh, he does hit. I want to gauge the damage if this does bring me into berry range. Uh, it just barely doesn't. Okay. So I could have gone for a heavy slam there. Do I need to save this thing? Uh, I actually don't, but I'm going to anyway. Um, basically, I want to get my Nitto King in for free. If I had Heavy Slam there, okay, I'll just go for the Heavy Slam. I'm going to let this thing go down. Uh, I'd prefer the free uh, switch in into my Nidoking King uh, more than the, like this is better for me, getting a free switch in into Nidoking King compared to um, Uh, keeping that thing because I have ways I, I still have ways of dealing with the Celebi hmm. he's probably going to stay in uh, I really 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 want a toxic spike Let's see. Ice Punch with Sheer Force and Stab will do more than Earthquake. So I'm going to go for the Ice Punch here. Uh, we do outspeed max speed Gudra with our Nidoking. King. Go for the Ice Punch and it does a good 50%. So we are going to be able to knock him out in two shots. He does have the GUI and he reveals the Draco Meteor. Okay. So, I'm really, really close to being able to sweep with my, um, being able to sweep with my Gyarados. He's not going to go for the Thunderbolt here. The thing I'm afraid of is him doubling, but I'm still going to make this because if he does double and I stay in, he's going to lose momentum. So I think it's a little riskier for him to double as opposed to, um, oh, he does actually double. So that's a bit surprising. He actually goes into the Arcanine. So this is actually going to take um, the Stealth Rock damage. <clears throat> uh, he's only revealed what? What did he go for? Okay, ne never mind. I was going to say, what did he go for on my Gyarados last time when I switched into Zapdos? But he actually didn't go for anything then. He, um, he just uh, switched out, which also revealed that I am faster than him. So he might want to switch out here. I'm actually just going to go hard for the Waterfall. Because I know I'm faster than him. And yeah, we just knock out the Arcanine. So that's really good. Uh, I assume the Celebi's coming in here. Yep. And luckily we have Protect on our um, Gyarados, and he doesn't know that yet. So we can actually click it right here to see what he goes for. I know he can't be Z-Move because he was Z-Move on his... Um, Excadrill, so we don't have anything to worry about right there. He does go for the Leaf Storm, so I'm actually going to take this opportunity to double into my Gengar because Gengar will be able to easily eat up two Leaf Storms. If he's not, um, if he's not choice, and he goes for Psychic right there, that would be a great uh, bait. But it does look like he does go for the Leaf Storm right there, and I was going to be at minus two Spadef, and this is actually fantastic because he can't switch out. Uh, lest he loses his Celebi. Uh, there's not really anything I can do. He basically has to sack Celebi here. 
So I'm just going to go for the Shadow Ball. Yep, he does stay in and go for a Leaf Storm. Hopefully no crit, because that would uh, knock out my Gengar. But yeah, it doesn't look like he has a crit. Able to eat up that Leaf Storm and just knock him out with a Shadow Ball right here. So I assume the uh, Girder is going to come in. Because if it goes into Gudra, uh, he's actually going to let me set up with my... Um, that would let me set up with my uh, uh, Gyarados, and that would probably win me the game. Oh, so he goes into Gutra. Okay. Uh, that's actually really surprising. Um, he does take the damage, and he's almost certainly a Salt Vest. I'm actually going to switch into this thing. If he goes for the Thunderbolt, trying to hit my Gengar and possibly hit a, uh, possibly hit a, uh, okay. So that's fine. I was going to say, if he goes for the Thunderbolt, then it wouldn't hit me and then I get the free switch in, but I sent this in knowing that it's probably going to get sacked. And here we go into our Um, Gyarados break the mold that is okay and I don't think he's going to stay in he's minus two he won't be doing very much damage so I'm going to torment hopefully torment the yep so this is where our secret tech is hopefully coming in we're going to torment the girder and try to set up on it so now he won't be able to click the same move twice in a row so here I am going to protect. He knows I have protect, so he could possibly read this and not go for the drain punch. But if he does go for the drain punch, he won't be able to go for it next turn. I could actually just Dragon Dance here anyway. Because I do eat up a drain punch, but it's not something I wanted to risk. Be well, I, it, there's really no risk in going for protect. I just get to scout, see what he does. And he does go for the drain punch. Perfect. So now he's not able to go for drain punch next turn, and I get a dragon dance up here. He almost certainly has mock punch, but mock punch won't do too much because we have so much bulk on this thing. And if he doesn't have mock punch, if he opted to go for ice punch for. Uh, for the Zapdos, then he can't really touch me. He has, like, knockoff Poison Jab and Ice Punch. But I pretty much expect him to have uh, Mach Punch. But he doesn't go for it, so... You get the Dragon Dance up, and he goes for the knockoff. Ooh, okay. Maybe predicting me to switch? I'm going to protect here again. Uh, he could switch out, but that's not too big of a deal for me. Uh, if he does. Okay, and he does decide to go for... He does decide to stay in, which is fine. Goes for a mock punch. Okay. Smart, smart. Wanting to be able to click drain punch next turn uh, here I'm just going to go for the waterfall it's plus one it'll do over 50% he won't be able to heal it all back with the drain punch which is important uh, hmm the question is does that put me within mock punch range if he doesn't go because like right here I think he's gonna go for mock punch This is actually a really important turn. Because if he goes for if he doesn't go for mock punch and I go for water fall, I think I win the game. But if he does go for mock punch, I need to protect here. It's a very important turn. And based on the way I'm playing, I've been playing like 
pretty safe to a point where it's like almost obvious that I'll go for protect here, predicting the mock punch. It's such a such an important play, but I'm gonna go for waterfall, expecting him to predict the protect, and he does predict the protect and doesn't go for the mock punch. He goes for the knockoff. He gets a crit, but that doesn't matter. I was I was probably in mock punch range anyway. Here I'm going to protect because now I think he's in psychic range. This uh, also prevents him from healing anymore. And if he doesn't, if he does go for the mock punch here, I'm just going to knock him out with another waterfall. Uh, he goes for the drain punch. That's fine. Um, yep, we go for the waterfall here. He goes for the mock punch. That's fine. I actually probably could have doubled and saved this thing to hit the Gudra again, but I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, we go into our boy LeBron, LeBron James, and as long as he doesn't. Pull out the random uh, Quick Claw or Bright Powder. We should be able to knock this thing out with the Psychic. Yep, okay. So Girder goes down. And now it's up to whether or not my uh, Gengar can knock out the Gudra. He is at about 25% after the Stealth Rocks. And we do have the Unburned Z move, so... Yeah, he's in the red. I, I'm i pretty much, I, I don't think he can do uh, live this. It is not a stab move. It is the Z all-out pummeling, uh, mostly for the Tyranitar, but it is still a very powerful move. I think at 190 base power, so it's even more powerful than a stab shadow ball. Then again, stab shadow ball does uh, actually do the same amount as a regular all-out pummeling. But yeah, here we go for the Z move, just like last time we Z moved the Gudra. And it does pick up the knockout, and Gudra is going to go down in another very close game. Uh, we are going to manage to move on to the finals. So that was that was actually an incredible game. I love that game so much. Oops, sorry, <laughs> sorry, you're seeing that on the screen. I forgot to mute my uh, forgot to put my Discord on. Do not disturb. Yes, I'd like to save the battle video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, that was actually a really good game. I'm glad that I got to actually use Torment to some success. It pretty much uh, won me the game. I, I wouldn't say it won me the game. But it definitely helped me when the game allowed me to set up a Dragon Dance on that girder, which gave me the necessary damage I needed for your boy LeBron to get the uh, other necessary damage it needed to clean the game up. Uh, so thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, next week we will be playing in the finals against Definitely Not Thatch. I, they have uh, Definitely Not Thatch was playing Scrawn in the semifinals, and he did manage to play victory. So that is going to be our opponent for the finals. I cannot wait to show you that battle. But until then, again, thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much uh, for the support throughout this tournament. And I will see you guys next week. Uh, goodbye for now.